everybody welcome back to a mod spotlight from me Sid um, it's been a while since I did a mod spotlight and more specifically it's been a while since I did this mod spotlight so back in October of 2015 um, back when the world was fresh and not locked down um, I did a series of spotlights on a particular mod called Ancient Warfare 2 which was a um, MPC automation machine medieval style mod and uh, you know what it's been five years since I did that spotlight and the mod has been maintained it's up to date at, uh, on 112 at the moment so we're revisiting it so welcome to part one of Ancient Warfare 2 mod spotlight and much like last time I have built a small set to present the information to you please note there are blocks and things in this um, set that are not from the ancient warfare mod I use all the mods to decorate the place so things like that sign or whatever not from the mod I will obviously discuss what's in the mod so first things first we're going to go to the library um, the first thing you are going to need before you start anything in ancient warfare is a research book Ideally, you are going to want two research books. Um, reasoning behind that is quite simple. Um, you have two tables and having a book in each works better. A uh, research book is really cheap. A couple of iron, some leather and some um, paper will give you a research book. And if we wander over here, um, you will find that you also have a engineering let me start over here a research station so the research station is chests crafting table and wood with uh, iron and gold gives you a research station like this this is where you actually put things into the queue and a engineering station is where you actually craft things um we'll come back to that in a second i wanted to show you so this book is bound to me and you have a research queue and yeah the uh binding of a book have i got a book kicking around anywhere i think i have i've got no book assigned to that or that now when i right click this it will bind to me now i've already done all of the research because obviously i needed it to show you the stuff but you click on the book, it sets the researcher for me, and then you can see the various research items. These are all the different research trees you can go down. Um, and that goes into the book. You have two of those, one in here, one in here. And when you're doing the research, you basically pick the item you want from the learnable research. It will give you a list of the materials you need to put into here. And once it has all the items, the research progress will go across the bar there. And you will get... The research item it's pretty straightforward now i will include in the description a link to a pdf i made five years ago which is a the list of the research tree and all the items you need to do it it does miss two new research items off it one of them is rocketry the other one is ballistics uh, but other than that it's still current so i will put that in the description in total if you wanted to research everything assuming you do this is actually what you will need to generate all the research from the entire mod um, most of it is relatively cheap a few it's are expensive obviously uh, there's an awful lot of iron goes into this and yeah um, pause your video at the moment that'll give you a list of everything you need and that is essentially research now when you're doing research it's worth noting that you put it in this progress bar goes across it takes 200 ticks 20 seconds currently by default and um, that can be customized in the configuration um, but by default you know there's no real waiting involved all right let's move on um, there are a number of items you can craft in uh, here in the mod so wooden gear sets Wooden gear sets are made with sticks and wood in a research table. It's a crafting item. It has no function other than being an intermediary step to crafting thing. A wooden bushing set, because everything's better with a bit of bush. Um, just sticks. Simple. Wooden torque shaft. So planks will give you that. Now there are obviously conflicts, because I've got all the mods involved, hence why you're seeing 
after that, but that's the one you're making, the wooden torque shaft. There are iron varieties of that, that just uses iron instead. Same again and again. And then there is steel. Now steel, if you have ancient warfare, is as simple as crafting iron with coal. will give you steel ingots. Um, if you're running other mods, they may override that and make you have to go things like, things like immersive engineering, for example. You know, you may have to use immersive engineering steel. So, but generally speaking, out of the packet, you know, steel is just coal. And that gives you steel gears, steel bushings and steel torque, which have exactly the same recipes, just using steel. These will give you differing levels of materials, which will allow you to make differing levels of machine. Um, yeah, it's a simple as really. So over in the old uh, town hall, not from this mod, <laughs> um, there are one or two items you're going to want. First thing you are going to need is a town hall block. Town hall block, very simple. Stone blocks, logs and chest will give you a town hall block. Like a so. I think I nope, I need that one. So we'll take that out in a moment for a moment. Um food bundles. Food bundles are created using apple, pork chop, um, bread, steak, cooked chicken, and a water bottle. Gives you a food bundle. They're actually not bad food to use as well. I mean they've got a fairly hefty uh amount of size uh six seven seven and a half inches so it's not bad at all uh i'm not sure what the saturation is unfortunately so we'll grab a bunch of those because we're going to need those as well and we shall place our town hall block down so the town hall block you'll see there's a list of deaths you can i think name the town block so We'll go with a uh, good old Sid Sidlington. And you can set a range on it. The range is how many, where the NPCs will come from. Now, because this set is actually not overly large, um, we'll set this to 40. We'll give it 40 for now. And we'll put a whole load of food in. And that's all you do with a town hall block. However, you can make a whole load of machines. You'll see them lined up, up over there. And the most basic machine you can make is this. It's the crop farm. Um, again, really cheap. Some wooden gears, um, wood, chest, and an iron hoe. That gives you a crop farm. We'll grab that. don't know whether I can't remember if I need it or not. You can also power these one of two ways well one of three ways actually but in this particular episode it'll be one of two because we're covering the third way in the next episode or the next part one is you can do it yourself you can use the hammer and you can actually um, use that to power the actual machine and yeah the other way of doing it is to get a worker NPC a worker NPC is made with a food bundle a couple of bits of gold and a wooden pickaxe It'll give you a worker NPC, and yeah, we'll come to him in a moment. Let's go and have a... In fact, I already have one. Let me just put that one back. I brought, prepared so many things. Um, so we're going to need that. We're going to need a hoe, because he's going to be a farmer. And we'll take a few seeds with us. And we come over here. Down here, uh, I've already got a farm. I've already also got some more seeds, so I'm uh, well prepared. So this is here, it's a farm, it's got a top inventory, it's got a resources inventory, which we can put into that. It did have some work queued up from when I ran it earlier, but at the moment it's just done. So we can take some of that, for example, we can stick um, some more carrots in, and we can also add bone meal to the special resources slot, and then we can put some work into it. We'll change the mode of that and just right clicking on that will we'll quite happily run that through. And it will restock here and put various bits up there as well. So we can stick, you know, more stuff in there quite easily. Um, now, if we take the bone meal out, because what's happening is the bone meal is it's harvesting because things have been harvested before they're ready so if we get the everything planted and then put the home that back in you'll get more out of it 
And that's really straightforward and simple. But why would you want to sit there doing that? You know, it's it's hardly gripping. So let us get our worker and we're going to set him down here and I shall give him a hoe he's gone oh, sorry he's gone to run off to get some food because he's peckish and then he comes back over here and he starts working at this farm not the fastest he'll do the do his work and every now and again he'll go back and get some food now these guys have got a few things you can change you can change the name so you can make him bob we can give him a shield armor we've got a few slots there which we'll talk about on a future part we can change his skin so we can give it a player name uh, i always do that just because it that face just makes me laugh um you can set his home you can clear home and repack allows you to say stop working i'd like you in my inventory he remembers all of his settings and everything so oh, face <laughs> um yeah so that's the that's the farmer now the farm will do all of the crops you've seen here the um, carrots beets potatoes uh wheat basic crops um you can set the bounds the bounds will show you the area this is at maximum size at the moment but you can shrink it if you wish you know and you can move the sides so that will move the positioning of the block so that's all fine however if you press f8 by default it will show you the bounding box of all of the farms and you can see here the bounding box is all over so if i were to do th uh, that for example you'll see that the entire thing is now moved over one and that's no longer in the farm so obviously no good let's um get myself back to there so that's basic farm does the job however you can set it up another way so you can set up it to set it up to do melons and pumpkins um and that's more than fine there is a tip to this and that is that you do not put the actual melon and pumpkin seeds in the farm because it will sow them in every single block it doesn't understand that melon and pumpkin require a space so sow the actual pumpkins yourself or melons and then it will actually do the harvesting so simple enough um so this is the difference you don't put the resources in for that one now over here obviously we have another wart farm the difference here of course it has to be so um sewn on soul sand and again works absolutely fine lots of nether warts um the next one along uh, same farm it's still a crop farm but now we're doing uh we've got cactus sugar cane sugar cane is there now here you'll notice i put a water source on the outside one down the middle one on the outside that is purely to maximize the number of growth slots if you were to do two water sources in there you'd only have three sets of slots but again it can handle all of that um, and it will grow them absolutely fine interesting one this is a fruit farm um, it's pretty much the same the only difference is instead of a hoe it's got an apple in the middle and it can sow cocoa beans by default from vanilla crops In much the same way as I did with the water, I have put the actual logs on the outside of the farm. So there's two growing surfaces there and there, and two growing surfaces. Again, maximizing my growth surface. And once it's got enough juice, it'll go. And now if I just go and I'm just going to go over here very quickly. And I'll just borrow that. Not much point on the... Uh, on some of the other farms because you can't bone me a lot of them but there you go um it's, it's having to go at the, with the old bone meal now and then harvest the cocoa beans simple next one over 
here's the tree farm axe goes in the middle um, now if you wanted an NPC for this you would need to give him a axe as well he needs to have the relevant tool to be a lumberjack um, you can stick your any of the any of the tree saplings in and it recognizes quite a lot of the modded trees as well so you can do that as well uh, if you have multiple mods and ah, let me just double check my bounding box and I think it's nominally it shouldn't have done that I think it's because it's um, a bit confused a bit like me really but wipe that down it's got bone meal so it will attempt to bone meal trees and eventually one of them should grow it will strip the the leaves out it obviously repopulates that it is gone and got the oh it's picked the jungle wood up over there and the apple and then chops them down one tip what i find with with the um tree farm certain oaks are not a major problem because they are quite sapling droppy their, their, their sapling drop rate is quite high some trees like dark oaks um some of the spruces and things like that can be a little bit stingy when it comes to dropping their leaves now when these leaves decay some of the saplings will fall on the outside edges and it won't it will only pick things up inside the boundaries what i've done in the past is um, i've expanded the farm boundary with an upgrade which we'll cover later on in the um, series and i have then constricted it in and put a stone element down so basically it, it can't plant all the way to the edges just just a little pro tip there from from me now probably one of the most overpowered farms in the game in my opinion uh, is this one this is the fish farm um crafted exactly the same but again fishing rod you give the uh npc a uh, any npcs that run this a fishing rod as well to run it and it basically fishes now it's area is different as you can see it goes down rather than up obviously you were working in water so you can sit there and run that and it will fit fish up fish and any of the loots that you would normally expect to get from fishing so definitely overpowered um, once you get a machine on there it will keep running for an age next we have the animal farm crafted with a sword because it's going to butcher animals so you can give it wheat you can give it seeds you can give it carrots these are all of course all of the items that it's things the chickens have been busy while i've been building so you'll have to excuse them um you can also give it buckets and you can give it shears in its special resources slot um normally you wouldn't put all of these animals in together but i've just kind of gone for for that on the basis things but you run that and you can see it sheared the sheep and with a bit of luck are you uh are you gonna what it should do given the right things it should use these items to feed the actual animal animals concerned so all of those maybe they're maybe they're not in the mood for breeding but again it will breed them and it will slaughter them um oh yes that's right in here now so finally we have another Corellis who's desperate to go and get some food. He really wants to go off that way. Um, he's here for a reason because Errol here is going to um, help us demonstrate the priest NPC. But before we do that, well, let's have a look at this guy, the Bard. The Bard 
is an NPC who is created by crafting an NPC with a loot. Loots are crafted like that. It's just a musical instrument. You can play, well, I use the word play loosely. You can plunk on it. Uh, <laughs> that's the nearest description I can come up with. I'll keep the, that because we'll want that. The flute sticks in iron. Oops. Doesn't sound like any flute I've ever heard, and my daughter's a flautist. Um, the harp. I don't know any. Yeah, that's definitely what a harp sounds like. And the drum. So these are all instruments you can give to your to your NPCs. Um, and of course, you can take your bard NPC, and you can pop him down. Uh, and he can be given that. However, at the moment he's just not doing it. Well, we want some food for one, um, which I haven't actually set up a um, block over here. Let me just go and extend the range of this one, and let him go and grab some food. Do 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 do. Preparation is the key, you know. Okay, there you go. That should. Here he comes. He's spotted the food. And he's off to get it. He's a bard on a mission. When he comes back, I'm going to show you how to get him to play tunes. Um, and more importantly, how to stop him playing tunes. So, it's night time, so he's going inside. He doesn't want to uh, do anything right now. He's are you coming in? Well, well done, sir. So, unlike all of the other NPCs, he has an advanced GUI. You can get him to play on random player entry, you can get him to play randomly, you can do a max delay, minimum delay, and you can add tunes. Now, the question is, how long do you want him to play for? I believe that is five minutes, so he's, just, he's not going to shut up, seriously. But how do you get pick these tunes? Well, there are five, sorry, six tunes. And basically you put in Ancient Warfare NPC, colon, bard, dot, tune, and the number. So I'm going to go with Ancient Warfare NPC. The case is not important. And bard, dot, tune, two. Now, oh, and he's off. I've actually managed to get him playing it twice at the same time. Shush. Will you please stop now? <laughs> anyway, that is the bard, and I will come back in a second once this is finished. All right. Or log off and log on again. That's how to shut him up. <laughs> um, in much the same way, if anybody who's seen my Tech Warfare or Techtopia playthrough uh, will know... Um, I'm not a fan of bards playing music all the time. They're, they're fine, the novelty's great, and then it gets annoying. Anyway, cleric, book, food bundles, things, gives you a priest NPC who is going to run off and get some food. He'll come back. But while we're doing that one, this fella here needs to meet Errol. And Errol, unfortunately, zombies don't like NPCs and they will uh, they will kill them albeit sometimes slowly so let us quickly kill Errol and with a bit of luck why did my priest run off the Okay, I am going to... Oh, he's gone to the town hall block and he is resurrecting, look. And... There is... Errol. Well, Bob. That's Errol. Um, <laughs> um, you can see there the deaths. Name Bob was killed 
by mob, position, can resurrect true, resurrected. So these guys are going to be invaluable um, when you're setting up your village because they're going to be, I'm going to just repack most of these because we don't really want them. They are going to be your um, your workhorses. They're, they're going to rescue your NPCs as and when they do. How has that sheep got out? I'm fairly certain. Uh, must have. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> um, they will die because NPCs in this have a, a very specialist form of artificial intelligence called artificial stupidity. Their pathfinding can be terrible. Um, they will wander off, they will put themselves in harm's way, they will get themselves in danger. You know, they're just generally not very bright. Um, but the last block I want to cover in this part is over here, the last machine. And that is this one. So put a pickaxe in a machine and you get a quarry. Now quarries are powerful. We've got one set up down there and they do pretty much exactly what you expect. They dig holes slowly. Um, you can improve their speed and the level of things that they can mine. So for example, if I come down here and start, I think you'll see that that has mined some cobblestone. Cobblestone, lapis. Now remember lapis can be mined by any tool so there's no issue there cobble iron cobble cobble iron but it's ignored that and it's gone straight down thing because it can't mine gold so what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to build an iron tool a basic tool quality upgrade now these can be applied to all the machines in the case of most machines they make them a little bit faster a little bit more energy efficient um, in the case of the quarry, it allows it to mine items that require iron tools. And then you can carry on down. Now I've deliberately seeded this so we shouldn't have to wait too long till we get down to the next tier of material. He says, maybe I did I, do, did I not do it as high up as I thought I had. Yep, so we've got, it'll go down through those. I did, definitely did put a diamond, there you go, there's a diamond there, look. Uh, so we got diamond. And it can mine diamond, of course it can. And it carries on down. The next level, there are two further time there's a diamond tools upgrade which will allow it to mine obsidian um, which is an intermediate quality tools and then there is this advanced tool quality upgrade now that is made with obs diamond tools and obsidian and steel I actually genuinely cannot think what that would mine. the only circumstance where I think that might be valuable is if you were running something like Tinker's Construct where there's a tier of materials higher than diamond that requires um, tools harder than diamond level to mine it, such as like cobalt and arbor ardite. Um, but it will also incre increase the speed of that thing. So this thing is is powerful enough, you know. It's um, you wouldn't obviously run it on a three by three, but I'm doing this for uh, demonstration purposes. But next episode, I will show you how we can a make these things run bigger, bigger areas, bigger um, areas of routine of. Um, effect and we're also going to cover uh some other bits and pieces as we go through the mod so there'll be some of the machine automation in there as well so until then thank you very much for watching guys and i will see you soon and bye for now